In the history of Star Wars, very few characters have garnered as much intrigue as Vader's young apprentice, and after a decade of no new appearances, I think the timing is just right for Star Wars to introduce the next wave of memorable characters for the big screen, and what better way to do this than with the OG badassery and unstoppable force that is Starkiller. Today's video will be all about Galen Merrick, so if you like this style of content or you're a fan of the Force Unleashed series, maybe drop a like. And let's jump into it. Timelines within Star Wars are tricky, and if we've learned anything about this sandbox over the years, it's that it seems to be easier to work sideways within the gaps of the Skywalker saga rather than pushing the collective universe forward post Return of the Jedi or Rise of Skywalker, whichever you prefer. This isn't the worst thing, but it does leave a lot to be desired with respect to creative interpretations because there's a lot of universe to dive deeper into, and the films and TV shows have barely scratched the surface. Granted, we've had some rumors about the High Republic in both novel novelization and potential film adaptations and man what i would give to see a game of thrones style show dealing with darth malgus and the jedi order during the knights of the old republic but i understand that that dream is a bit far-fetched what isn't however is the clear opportunity now available to disney and lucasfilms to introduce someone like star killer officially into the canon and they really wouldn't have to work too hard to pull this off the biggest hurdle of course being that sam whitworth is currently 45 years old so the likelihood of a live action star killer ever being a mainstay would be a logistical concern but there is a simple solution around that and one that i will discuss in a moment star killer's appeal comes not only from his insane strength and power, but also his unique story. Taken as a child after an assault on Kashyyyk, Galen Merrick grew to be the ultimate weapon under Vader's command, wiping out countless Jedi and learning the ways of the dark side in secrecy. His relationship with Vader, Juno, and himself created a fascinating story about the experiences of a lost soul, who was even cloned multiple times with those versions having their own nightmares of their past life as the original Galen Merrick. This is a tragic and brutal character whose limits no no bounds and could become the perfect conduit for wild, otherworldly storytelling that would benefit both Starkiller and Darth Vader as well. One of the first things people often say when considering a Starkiller adaptation is that he'd be too powerful to introduce or too complicated of a storyline to unravel. That counterpoint might have worked in the early 2010s when the scope of universe building in science fiction and fantasy movies overall was a few degrees more limited, but with the improvements in technology and a clear increase in directorial options thanks to cinematic universe behemoths like Marvel, I actually think that there's more of an incentive now to start exploring and pushing and expanding experimenting those limits in Star Wars storytelling. Both from a graphical perspective and a technological perspective, showcasing the force powers and athletic prowess of a prime star killer is much more achievable today than it was 10 years ago. With directors like the Russo brothers, and yes, even someone like Zack Snyder, stylistically, you could achieve the darker tones of a star killer storyline with media as recent as Andor and Clone Wars season seven, proving that the scope and atmosphere can do wonders for a story. With a protagonist who already has canonical connections to an important time within the lore, Starkiller offers a foundational opportunity to showcase some Dark Horse one-shots, and if nothing else, the rumored Vader solo series could be the perfect way to introduce this new apprentice. Being a blank canvas with hundreds of pages of lore at the ready and exploring the farthest reaches of the galaxy in all of its weird and awe-inspiring forms could be a perfect change of pace that allows this character to live out his insane power creep all whilst being wildly entertaining for older and newer fans. Ahsoka's solo series is in development, and she has proven to be integral to the future plans of the cinematic universe, so imagine a story centered around Darth Vader, trying to replicate the same success he had with Ahsoka through a fresh-faced Starkiller, commanding and training him to hunt down rogue operatives or bring peace and order to dangerous parts of the distant galaxy. The mercenary for hire role in Mandalorian is already a massive success, and taking that formula to a much richer character could do wonders for the mature Star Wars audience. The older viewers of this franchise should be trusted with this kind of material, and it would give competent writers a chance to not only showcase more of Vader and Starkiller's brutality, but explore the themes of identity and interpersonalization that were already fundamental to Galen's character. The benefit of spending nearly 13 years without Starkiller is that Star Wars has already proven it knows how to write compelling narratives about clones, and how to navigate that thread for an eager audience. If we spent multiple seasons of television 
television, learning to love clones and their unique personalities, I have no doubt a series about Starkiller could hit those same harmonies and create an intriguing character study about what it means to be alive. After all, the bulk of Starkiller's story has already been written in the Forced Unleashed games, and it was that moral tug of war he became a prisoner to that made those games so memorable, even for my young, dumb adolescent brain. While Sam Whitworth may be on the older side for such a role, there's no doubt the technology exists to allow him to debut as the iconic prodigy of Vader, but more so the very condition of Starkiller and his background alleviates many of the narrative pitfalls because he can always be remade as a new clone. This presents a physical bypass around the real-life limitations and the structure of a Vader and Starkiller dynamic might be the appropriate tone to use during the time after Kenobi, but before Rogue One. Well-written character dramas have already worked beautifully in Andor, so why not apply that same treatment to the fascinating build of Galen Merrick whilst having the budget and vision necessary to showcase the scope of his powers in a setting that works for him? Places like the Outer Rim, the ruins of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, and even in cloning facilities built in secret by Vader's forces. We've already had a taste of the cloning programs in Mandalorian Season 2, and this would be a great way to round out that lore, all while aligning with the main Star Wars timeline without accidentally affecting any major characters. I think there's room for Star Wars to up the ante from the grounded elements it's maintained consistently in its storytelling throughout the years. While shows and characters like Andor and The Mandalorian have rightfully become staples of the modern age, there seems to be an itch for a large scope adventure, something completely unique and drastically more imaginative with regards to the Force users in this universe. That itch is begging to be scratched, and Starkiller could be the answer for breaking free from the barriers of the Skywalker saga. While canonically, Starkiller's inclusion would fall within the timeline, he as a character wouldn't have to, and his story expands far beyond the normal bad guy turns good tropes we've seen a few dozen times now. It could be a story about identity, a story about humanity, a story about belonging, and a story about acceptance. In a universe full of aliens, clones, droids, and mystical entities, having the perspective of someone as powerful as Starkiller might be the perfect olive branch for reaching a wider and more complex audience. A man, or even his clone who lives within his own Groundhog Day coming to grips with what reality is and isn't, all while being unfathomably powerful? That sounds insane in all of the right ways. And as always, thanks for watching.